Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj here, your host. I am back with my weekly economic report. Uh, as I said in my last uh, uh, report, last week's report, that I'll be covering major news only now. So last week there were quite a few major news, you know, major events, you know, taking place in Indian economy. So I am here. I'm going to analyze them today. Uh, let me begin with the auto sector, you know, news. You know, in my last. Uh, report I said that the auto sector is in huge bubble and uh, the bubble is already building up and uh, the government is also uh, continuing with the bubble by reducing banks and RBI and other people they are reducing the interest rate on car loans and uh, that is the reason why the bubble was building up but last week there were some news which which are showing some signs that maybe this car auto sector bubble is already bursting you know so Car sales dropped by 19%, uh, biggest drop in last 10 months. So uh, maybe, uh, as I said, because the price is going up, the you know last week uh, also there is a, the interest rate is not actually going down. Uh, RBI is not keeping it, you know, not lowering it very much. So that is the reason why it is possible that these car companies are finding it difficult to sell their cars on uh, cheap loans. Um, not only that, not only that the car sales declined by 19%, uh, the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, CIAM, uh, because of this boss, because of this recession, because of these lower sales, are now asking government for some kind of help. Actually, they are asking for some kind of bailout package. As always happens when they cannot uh, 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 properly legitimately sell their cars to consumers and uh, on uh, legitimate profit by serving their consumers all these all these fusses to corporations they go to government and ask uh, for bailouts basically that that means that the taxpayers are going to foot the bill of all these bailouts so instead of directly going and buying these cars and giving their money voluntarily to all these companies these taxpayers are forced to give their money to these companies, you know, without any, you know, exchange of cars also. So it's 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 completely shameful for all these car companies to go and ask the government for bailout packages. If they cannot compete in the market, if they made mistakes, if they made errors, well, I understand they made errors because of RBI's policy, but but that's what happened. If you are not if you are not very much, if your judgment about future is not very good, then you are a bad entrepreneur and you're making errors and you're going to make losses and it is better that you go out of business. And as I said, the auto sector is into big bubble. We don't need this many cars, you know. Now, I'm not in a position to tell you that how many cars are actually needed in India. What I know is that if you need a car, then you must be a creditable, you know, customer if you, if you want to buy it on loan. Uh, much better is that people earn something, produce something first and earn their money and then they buy something from their hard earned you know, money which they are you know, uh, you know, earning from labor market. And on the other side, uh, India's industrial output uh, barely grew in July. The index of industrial production came out just 0.1%. So this is nothing but the continuation of the bubble which is popping right now. The Indian economy was uh, in a big bubble uh, uh, as I said after the 2007 financial crisis started. You know Indian government announced uh, maybe I think something like three stimulus packages and they printed a lot of money and spent this money into the economy which created all these bubbles into different sectors of the Indian economy. and. The moment they raise the interest rate a little bit, something like two, three percentage, already um, this bubble has started to pop, and uh, the impact of that recession is you can see on this industrial output because most of the freshly printed money went into this capital goods, you know, industry, and that is where the recession is having a major impact. Um, and as I said, this recession is just a correctionary process and it should be allowed to run its natural course instead of artificially interfering uh, and, and by lowering the interest rate and spending all this money and announcing all the stimulus packages. It is much better that the male investment of the prior boom should be allowed to be liquidated and only then the economy can resume its normal course. 
if they will keep on intervening like this into the economy then this recession will ultimately turn into huge uh, you know depression you know already the world economy is in a big depression and I'm sure that all the central bankers you know world over were simultaneously taking actions basically printing money they are going to turn this recession into a greater depression so that is what is my biggest worry right now and on the other side the government fiscal deficit is also widening simply because they are spending all this money on different kind of you know so-called infrastructure project and announcing all these stimulus packages bailout packages for Air India and other Sikh industries and um, other you know so-called welfare programs so this warfare welfare state is spending huge amount of money which is not into existence and that is what is creating this gap into their budget the fiscal deficit is increasing and many credit rating agencies like you know standard and poors and other people other agencies are threatening that they are going to downgrade the uh, investment status of India basically government bonds and that is the reason why the government is panicking right now and they are they are you know they last week they announced that they are going to you know uh, take some steps which is going to contain the fiscal deficit it is also interesting that they use this word contain they don't want to just you know remove the fiscal deficit the fiscal gap they just want to contain it that itself shows that they are they are not very much serious about curtailing their expenditures you know as you can see the you know the steps which they are taking uh, what happened is actually finance minister called upon all these uh, public sector units nine major public sector units and told them that they should uh, uh, continue their large investment project worth 1.80 lakh crore rupees so Chidambaram and Prime Minister Manmohan Singh he, they think that uh, economy is stalling because all these so-called investment projects are not you know being carried out right now uh, by the public sector units and they think that because the economy is slowing that is the reason why there is a fiscal gap but that is not true in fact because they spent a lot of money announced stimulus packages and that created all these bubbles and those bubbles are popping right now and that is the reason why the economy is slowing down so uh, fiscal deficit is the is the cause of slowing down in the economy and and by increasing the economic growth so called you know increasing economic growth by you know asking these PACs to you know step up their so called investment projects they are not going to contain fiscal deficit in fact what they're doing is they are you know they are they are stimulating spending instead of reducing their expenditures you know the only way in which fiscal deficit can be contained is government reducing spending and ultimately in the short run they should balance their budget and in the long run they should just make their expenditure zero you know only then the economy will recover right now they are trying just mainly you know uh, to contain fiscal deficit via tax increases and not, and not through spending cuts across the board and that's not gonna help in fact that is going to if you're going to stimulate spending and, and that is only going to you know increase the fiscal deficit and the burden later on because the economy is not going to grow this public sector units are already sick units they are inefficient they are they are just bureaucracies and they are not going to do any kind of investment they don't do any kind of investment what they do is that they basically uh, divert the productive investment of you know private sector into the uh, uh, unproductive public sector so that's not going to help the economy all this private sector investment is crowded out by all this public sector you know bureaucracies and that is the drag on the economy right now the government is very big it is in existence right now and that's what is creating all these problems so by by asking these PSUs to step up their investment it is not actually investment it's pure consumption because as I said the resources are diverted from the productive sector of the economy and then they are being dumped into this ineffic inefficient you know sick in the public sector units so it's not investment but in any case if it is even if it is investment it's not gonna help you know if we just uh, for the sake of argument if we say that it is investment even then it is not going to help anyone government needs to just you know get out of you know Indian economy they will have to roll back themselves on it then the economy is going to recover the more they will intervene the more problems they are going to create 
All right, last week uh, they also, uh, the petroleum minister uh, also announced that uh, diesel is going to go up by 5 rupees and uh, LPG home cooking cylinder, gas cylinders are only going to be, uh, now going to be, the subsidized gas cylinders are only uh, now limited to 6 cylinder per household. And Manmohan Singh uh, said that this price hike is step in the right direction. Well, I just don't understand that how a price hike can be a step in the right direction. Uh, what can happen is uh, they are doing these things to reduce their subsidy burden. But I'm saying that why you just give subsidies to all these sectors? Just get out of the whole economy. Just just stop existing, and petrol and oil and other products will, you know, in in fact, come down. You know, the prices of all these products will actually come down. You are inflating your currency right now, debasing your currency, and you are having a lot of you know control over the supply of all these you know oil products and other economy also that is the reason why you see all these imbalances in fact oil is you know plenty you know out there in the reserves the only problem is that because all these resources are owned by the government that's why it is very difficult to extract them and you have to take the licenses and you have to you know they are regulating everything so that's why on the one side supply is not coming up and on the other side they are inflating, they are debasing the currency, the purchasing power of rupees is going down day by day and that's the reason why the price of these uh, pr uh, products are going up. Same thing is happening all over the world in international you know, arena also governments are you know owner of all these natural resources. So existence of government in all those countries they also create all this problem. But even if India is you know suppose you know we cannot do anything about those countries directly but India, suppose this country is on a gold standard, sound monetary standard, then what will happen is price of petrol and everything will go down. If you see the price of oil in terms of gold grams, and actually right now the international prices are less than their average prices, you know, uh, long term average prices in terms of gold grams. So it is cheaper right now. But, but because they are just printing money and th these are all political moves, they just want to win votes. So that's why Prime Minister is saying that this is a step in the right direction. No, Mr. Manmohan, this is not a step in the right direction. This is the, this is step in the wrong direction. You don't have to take any steps. You know, you have to go back, as I said, just roll back the government. And that's what is going to help everybody. Everybody in the sense, uh, people, I know politicians are going to lose their power and that's the reason why they are not going to give up their power voluntarily. Ultimately, the market will overwhelm them and it will, you know, compel them, force them to stop doing what they are doing right now, you know, that is, you know, intervening into the economy. If you will not stop doing that, you know, then the economy will crash completely and then, as I said, they will have to, you know, get back and you know, roll back and stop existing. You know, I think that is the you know end game. It looks like that now. They are not going to stop anything less than the final crack up boom. Anyways, the RBI said that they are comfortable with bank liquidity, but the real problem is not with liquidity. The problem is this, you know, solvency of all these banks. You know, these banks are not solvent. They're insolvent right now. They cannot, you know, all, you know, honestly fulfill their their uh, promises which they have given to their depositors that they will give them the, the ba money back. As I said in my past lectures, also that if if all these depositors go right now to, you know, you know, with, withdraw their deposit, that then these banks they don't have their money there. They have lent it out to some other parties. So it's not a problem of liquidity. It is a problem of solvency of all these banks. This, Fractional reserve banks are inherently bankrupt and it is just a matter of confidence. The day the confidence is gone, public confidence is gone, all these banks will collapse. Also, WPI inflation, you know, jumped up in August. It came out 7.55%. As I said, you know, this wholesale price index is also jumping up. You know, the real inflation is much more than this right now because they have printed a lot of money, the purchasing power of rupee has gone down very much and this inflationary situation is going to continue for, you know, in, uh, in future also because now uh, the US Federal Reserve also announced that they are going to print money endlessly, QE to infinity and coordinated action is going on in between all these handled bankers to print a lot of money. So if they are going to print money, 
Central Bank of you know India and RBI is also going to print a lot of money and that's going to create inflation worldwide so I don't think so there is any respite from this inflationary situation right now we will have to press for um, higher prices and boom bust cycles and wealth transfer and everything one way to protect yourself is to continue to buy gold and silver as I said immediately after Fed's announcement gold, gold jump and silver also jumped very much so they are going to you know uh, take care of inflation and other you know regime uncertainties which are created by this government so you should continue to accumulate regularly gold and silver last but not least government announced some major foreign direct investment steps to boost the economic growth you know they are saying that they want to revive the animal spirits of india this keynesian word animal spirit as if some kind of psychological thing drives the economy you know they say that it's a confidence problem you know it's it's animal spirits which are you know dead right now it's nothing like that the problem is the government's intervention you know central banks cheap monetary policy that has created all this trouble there is nothing like animal spirit or nothing like confidence but in any case they say that they are going to open up the retail market for foreign direct investment uh, but as I said, all these all these governmental policies are going to help only few well collected connected people with the government. This is this is not capitalism. This is not free market. This is actually fascism and crony capitalism. And all these policies are also not clean. There are a lot of provisos and a lot of strings attached. So let's see what conditions are there for this retail you know foreign company that they want to enter into the Indian retail market first thing is that state uh, will decide on the implementation of this policy so individual states are going to decide whether they're going to allow Walmart you know into their state or not and again as I said the guardian not of state is not you know a cut over here as long as government is going to be involved into all these operations all these processes corruption will take place and you know, poor farmers will lose their land some people will benefit but the majority of people will basically bear all the cost of all these kind of policies so it is it is not going to you know do much good for all of us uh, another condition is sourcing from small companies one third sourcing for small farms big cities these stores can only open in big cities like 10 lakh plus population minimum investment of hundred million dollars so the the next thing is that don't know how many companies will actually enter with this many uh, you know stringent conditions and they will have to go and you know uh, meet the bureaucrats and everything and it's gonna be very tough you know even if they want to come over here but as I said even if they are coming the, the major fundamental issue is not whether this farm should come over here or not the issue is that it is none of government's business to allow them and not allow them if they want to come here, you know, it's the customers, it's the consumers, they are the ones who are going to decide from whom they are going to buy their products, you know, why these companies will have to take permission of government and why we have to rely on these <coughs> politicians and bureaucrats for all these kind of businesses to come into our, con you know, this country. So it's it's not free market capitalism, this is just chronic capitalism and fascism, just going to help few people, not not other guys. They also increased their uh, foreign direct investment to 49% in airline industry. More, uh, this move also comes with a lot of conditions. Uh, things like interested companies have to get clearance from foreign investment promotion board. Three quarter of board of directors should be Indians and follow the rules of the aviation ministry, etc. So it's not gonna be easy for all this company to just directly come. And as I say, law it's it's you know in, 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 instead of you know uh, an economic policy, this is more like you know uh, Manmohan Singh government is you know desperate to say that you know to you know show people that they can do something. So it's kind of a more of a political move. And as I said, already many of the partners of this government, uh, coalition partners, are you know. Uh, making a lot of noise that they are going to take, you know, take out their support, Mamta Banerjee and other people. So who knows what's going to happen in future, maybe they'll backtrack on this also. Manmohan Singh is saying that we have to do all this thing, otherwise the growth is going to go down. Well, I'm saying that you just stop doing anything, you know, instead of doing anything positive and then the economy will start to recover. Let the free market, you know, do its job, it, let, let it take over. 
and then things will improve as long as you guys are going to politicians you are going to intervene things are not going to you know improve for better all right so this is uh, this is it for this week and i'll be seeing you in next week thank you very much for watching me goodbye